Today's lecture will be over chapter 22, section 1, Objectives. Number 1, discuss the influence of Islam in Southwest Asia. Number 2, describe the history of theocracy and colonialism in the region. Number 3, explain the importance of oil for the region's economy. And number 4, describe modern Arabic life. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to look at the map here. And of course, the area that we're looking for is going to be right in here, the Saudi Arabia and the Arabian Peninsula. Now, what we see is, is that there's a couple countries that we may not have heard too much about. Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain. Um, if you start kind of looking a little bit more at the um, first Gulf War, what we see is, is that we see Saudi Arabia is here along with Kuwait. Iraq, of course, is another country that we've been hearing quite a bit about. But a lot of the countries that we hear about right now in terms of what's going on in the world are going to be located right on the Mediterranean Sea. A question that this chapter kind of is, is trying to get to a, a long-winded answer is why is there so much fighting in this area? Now we talked about the physical parts of geography of this area. There's not a lot of water, there's a lot of oil, and that's going to make it so the economy becomes very rich. Also, when we started looking at the satellite right here, we saw that the Arabian Peninsula is very, very dry. But when we start looking right off the Mediterranean coast, that's where we're going to see a little bit more of the green area. Now, still uh, uh, semi-arid, but it's going to be a little bit more hospitable. One thing that we want to look at is we want to look at this little country right here, which when we kind of uh, pull out here, it's still going to be visible, and that's going to be Israel. Israel is going to be one of the most um, affected areas in regards to fighting that we see in the entire world. If we kind of zoom in, you can see the Gaza Strip, you can see the West Bank. These are all areas that have been fought over for a very long period of time. What the important part here is is that Israel in 1948 is going to be given to the people um, that are the Jewish people. And what happens is, is that there are people that are living on this land that are Palestinian, which are going to be Muslims. And these two people are going to fight for a long period of time. Now, one of the things that we want to discuss today is, is that you have a lot of people in this area, again, because they're not going to live in other areas. Also, what we see is, is that this area is going to be very, very um, sought after because of religious reasons. So what we want to do today is that we want to take a little bit of a... Um, a, the, a deeper look into the religions that are fighting and the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at the Islamic religion. Now the areas that we're looking at, we've discussed this already, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. Now, what is happening during this time is that we have Bedouin nomads. And what they're doing is they're moving from oasis to oasis. Remember, that's underground water. That is areas that have a little bit of um, area that basically is going to make it so that the cattle, the um, nomads, that the people, they're going to be able to live in these oasis. Now, they're going to build strong family ties together. They're going to fight off other families, and they start developing fighting skills. These fighting skills are going to help spread the religion of Islam. And so the religion actually gets kind of pushed across the entire continent of Asia and Africa because it's going to be spread by these nomads. Now, Islam is going to be a religion based upon the uh, teaching of the founder of the prophet Muhammad. Muhammad lived in Mecca, which is going to be Islam's holiest city. Now, in Islam, you're going to see the five, there are five pillars, and these five pillars are going to create a common culture. The first, first is going to be faith. They believe that all believers must testify that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. The second is the prayer, prayer facing Mecca five times a day. Also, they're going to go ahead and they're going to have a place of worship called a mosque. The third pillar of faith is going to be charity, where you're giving money to the less fortunate. Number four is fasting in the holy month of Ramadan. They don't eat and drink during daylight hours. And then the last pillar is going to be a pilgrimage. All Muslims should make a hajj to Mecca once in their life. Now, when we kind of analyze the five pillars, um, a lot of the religions have very similar ones faith. Um, a lot of the religions, religions believe that there's one God, uh, again, the monotheistic religion, and that, of course, people should testify to that one God. Most of the religions have some sort of prayer, also have some sort of charity, also have some sort of fasting. But in the Islamic religion, it's a pilgrimage that really kind of sets it apart. 
Now, the spread of uh, Islam, you're going to see these armies of the Bedouin fighters are going to move across the deserts. They're going to conquer desert land, put Muslim leaders in control. That's one of the things that we kind of forget about when we start talking about people going out and taking other people's lands is that you're going to go ahead and you're going to take other people's lands, but at the same time, you have to instill a government that will continue to spread your um, your your culture and your beliefs this is where you see the spreading of the islamic teachings because these uh areas or this um these empires are going to be built on promoting the islamic faith muslims armies spread across asia africa and europe and by the middle ages a large area of the world is going to be under muslim control so if we go back to the map what we see here is is that this area has always been very 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 muslim whoops excuse me uh, again the arabian peninsula very very muslim and what happens is is that the religion of islam is going to spread it's going to spread iran afghanistan pakistan uh into this area right here you're also going to see in this area of africa north and east africa uh, you're going to see the Islamic religion spreading into there as well. You could also go all the way into um, kind of northern uh, Asia um, and, and almost all the way into northwestern um, Europe, uh, I should say southeastern Europe, when we start talking about some of these areas. Um, uh, you, you, we kind of see that um, there's uh, the Muslim religion kind of spreading all over. So the, these uh, areas are going to be spread and there's going to be a lot of fighting. Now one of the things about the Muslim religion is that a lot of these countries are uh, theocratic. And what that means is is that your religious leaders are in control. Um, in the United States, we do not have a theocratic government. Um, a lot of our leaders that set up our government were religious, but it was actually Thomas Jefferson who said that our government should have freedom of religion. Religion. Anybody that wants to be religious uh, is going to be able to be re or is going to be able to practice any religion that they want. So what we see in these areas is is that they don't have freedom of religion. Their governments are set up by the Muslim governments. Now it's still true in modern nations such as Iran. In the late 1600s, Muslim nations start to weaken. Britain and France control most of the region after World War One, and this is where you start to see the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, colonial values. Uh, the Suez Canal is a vital link. We've talked about that before and how it's basically is going to connect the Mediterranean Sea to the rest of the world instead of going through the Strait of Gibraltar you're going to be able to use the Suez Canal um, Abdullah al is going Asada is going to take control of most of the Arabian Peninsula and this is where we get the name Saudi Arabia in 1932 now one of the predominant uh, groups that is going to get together is going to be called OPEC. Now, what is OPEC? OPEC is a group of countries that have gotten together, and their main goal is to make sure that they control the worldwide oil prices. So in 1960, these groups looking to basically um, help themselves out fe uh, feature OPEC. OPEC is an organization of petroleum exporting countries, including Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Iran, Iraq and what they want to do is they want to set worldwide oil prices it's interesting is that there's some articles out there right now that OPEC is struggling because some people are saying right now that they have set the prices so high that a lot of the countries are starting to look at electronic cars um, they're trying to basically lower their dependency on oil and if these countries again OPEC if they don't have oil as as uh, making top dollar they're gonna start to struggle and so OPEC has actually been fighting quite a bit and there's some countries that are saying um, we should do some different things but if you look at these countries the majority of them are going to be Muslim countries with the theocratic government and so OPEC predominantly not always but predominantly OPEC is going to be aimed at the United States and saying that they want to get the United States to stop helping Israel and what they do is that they gouge the United States with the oil prices and increase to them as much as possible now, changes to urban life, rapid development as technology undermines traditional lifestyle. Trucks replace camels, mall replace marketplaces. Villagers, farmers, nomads move to the cities. And again, we call this urbanization. 25% urban in 1960, 58 in the 1990s. By 2015, estimated at 70%. Saudi's population is 83% urban. Um, oil jobs require skilled workers and educational systems can't provide. And so what they see is the foreign workers are brought in. One of the problems with these foreign workers coming in is that they come in with a different culture and a lot of the countries don't like that so they do everything they can to 
basically meet the needs of the workers and that's where they're trying to increase their education systems now women are going to go ahead and they're going to often cover their heads with veil uh, vases with scarves and veils women's roles are slowly expanding more educated and they're also working now, we also see prayers perform at dawn, at nude, mid-afternoon, sunset, and before bed, and they're going to attend mass services on Fridays. Fasting in the Ramadan is reading sports um, spiritually, self-control, and humility. Ad al-Fur marks the end of Ramadan with gifts, dinners, and charity. This concludes our lecture over chapter 22, section 1. Please complete the assessments at this time.